All right, last intro. Oh. Official. Is it? Okay. Yeah, we are officially done with uh, music intros, so enjoy this while it lasts. This is going to be the last one as we uh, create new more. and efficient ways yeah, yeah. of pumping out more content to you. So because of our our uh, new new software tricks from Vish, mm-hmm. you, can expect, you can expect more. Yeah. So uh, 2019 with a bang. Four months later. Yes. Cool. Here we go. Three, two, one. Boom. And we are back with another episode of Crack Gamers. This is your weekly roundup where we talk about four things that we thought were cool from the week. Yeah. And we dissect them as Vish plays video games. Yeah. That's the name Socratic Gamers. Yes, so very true. First, actually, before we get into the topics, you're probably wondering how come we didn't do a movie review this week, given that the biggest movie of all time just came out. And uh, well, my sister is not in Toronto, so we're waiting out yeah. of our politeness. Our what? Our movie squad? Yeah, our, our M Squad. Our M Squad. <laughs> M squad. Yeah, we got a little chat group called M Squad. Uh, we discuss <laughs> okay. what time and how we're all meeting. Anyway, so first on the docket, Vish, what you got? Oh, what I have. So earlier in the week, mm-hmm. uh, there was a Tesla kind of event. Another, okay. Another Elon Musk for us for this year. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Elon strikes again. What would Elon do? Pick up a tea on Teespring. Oh, yes, he would, yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, so, so the event was almost like, I think it was like three hours or something like that. Oh, no way. Wow, that's pretty uh, long. I tried to watch in the beginning, but uh, information-wise, it was still too much for me, so I couldn't really... Because they're talking about chips and stuff. Oh, okay. Oh, it was like too hardcore. And I'm like, yeah, mm-hmm. I don't know if I can pay attention to this one. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. So I just waited for people to do their uh, little recap on what, what happened. Mm-hmm. So basically, it was the whole event was about uh, the... And a, like their future exact plans for autonomous going autonomous. Oh, that's cool. And uh, so there's a few things that uh, what well, you can like the the stuff that I took away from what Elon said. Okay. Because a lot of the time, like in like the beginning when I was watching, it wasn't Elon talking. He would pitch in here and there. It was mainly the guys who were who worked on the thing. Oh, nice. Okay, cool. Right. So um, so they built this this chip that goes like behind like the glove box of the car which does all the computing and all the whatever redundancies and things like that so when it goes full um full self-driving uh-huh or full uh, uh, not autonomy which is like there's no driver there's no need for a driver anymore that uh that this is the best thing that they have right like there this is the chip that will do all this processing power and everything uh-huh without um so it's like one specific chip? Well, I mean, like, um, the chip and whatever, the motherboard that it has. Okay. It, it fits inside of a glove box. Oh, wow. Right right behind the glove box of the, in, the, in, the, in the Tesla. That's wow, the so there's going to be, like, a lot of room. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. That's like a, yeah, and then, uh, like, some things that I did hear uh, Elon say was um, that they made the best chips that, even though they're not a chip-making company, or, like... Not that they're a chip make company. Like they're not like a, like kind of like an Apple. Like like a because they don't make the chips. They're working with Samsung to make those chips. Oh, but okay. To put him, putting them all together was them, right? Or their design in a sense. Right. That right, they're right. making their the best process, like the best. Um, uh, <laughs> I don't know what words they use, but the the best kinds of things that no one else has, something like that. A car oh, yeah. company doing this and not a. Not uh, a straight up tech company, like a computer company. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I mean, they're saying. still. A, I would consider them a tech company still because everything in that car is tech. But uh, right, I understand what you're saying. But they're not designed on computer design, like per se, right? Uh huh. And then, so basically, um, uh, they're already. Even though they said, said all this, they're already working on the next gen chip as well. That's so funny. It's just like a <laughs> little Apple thing going on. How they like release the iPhone. And it's like we're already working on the iPhone twenty six. Yeah. As soon as it was like it's ready, now we can focus on what we need to do next. It's just going to cost a lot of money to bring it out right away. Those next things. Right. 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 So, right. 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 Um, 
or they have ideas where they need to go. So basically what, what they want to do with this autonomous thing, what he was mentioning was doing the whole, it's called like, he was calling it like robo taxi. Okay. Where, uh, so when you go to work, generally people just leave their car in the parking lot, right? Yeah. So what would happen, what be, what he wants to do or what the plan is so that people would send it out to, like it'll drive, mm -hmm. like uh, autonomously mm -hmm. and pick up people or whoever you want it to pick up. Oh, so it's almost like an Uber. It's, it is exactly like an Uber. It's a, uh, it's an autonomous Uber. Y yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it's like that freaking uh, game, uh, not Game of Thrones, uh, Black Mirror. Yeah. That episode where yeah. like, uh, they're like selling things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, remember yeah. that like robot that sold like pizzas? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah delivery yeah. pizza delivery thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like that. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, so it'll um, while wow, we're entering some crazy. Whoever you want to, you know, set it up to be like to have access to it. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Either your friends, social media friends, or like whatever, right? Right. Uh, and uh, it would generate money for you. Oh wow! So so you just have to like pay the initial investment and the upkeep, and then. Yeah, so what he's just, saying uh -huh. is this is the pretty like generous numbers in a sense, but you could potentially generate up to thirty thousand dollars a year in profit. Wow. Like passive income. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah, but it's you're not cool. doing anything. It would drive itself, right? Allegedly. Allegedly you can make thirty thousand. No, that's what that's what he's saying. Uh, what do you mean allegedly? Like you can't He predicted. This is his prediction. Yeah, exactly. So allegedly. Prediction. That's the prediction. Okay. I don't know if this, does it mean the same thing. Uh, allegedly means like it's not, it's not a hundred percent, but you could make up to this. Well, yeah. Okay. Sure. So same thing then. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and then, um, so this is it would be considered level five anatomy and autonomy. Sorry. Okay. Autonomy. Uh, so that's why you can uh, have no one in there. No. Uh, there are no cars right now. When does this hit the market? So, yeah, that's a good question. He's saying he's estimated in by the middle of 2020. No way. Wow, that's pretty soon. To have, yeah, Tesla's autonomous system will have... All right, but how much does it cost, though? Because, like, all right, sure, you make 30000 in passive income, but if it costs you a million dollars to purchase the thing in the first place, no. it's like, well, how much? Uh, the car itself? Yeah. Uh, like the car, what it is right now. So you're saying that in three years it could pay itself off? Yes. <laughs> wow. Okay. Why, all right. Wait. What if everyone buys one? Then how would you make money? Uh, how would who make money? Like, let, you would make money? Let's say let's say everyone buys one, and then but you generate money by using it as like a independent Uber, right? Okay. Yeah. So like if everyone's got one in the market, it's like we're all just using independent Ubers. So how do you make thirty thousand? Uh, I don't think it's possible that everyone's going to have one. So. Okay. It's just that's. But what if everyone decides to buy one? Not everyone, but like the majority of people. Because you know uh, what I'm saying? Like there's yeah, a finite yeah, amount of money. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, Unless your whole business is that and then you just buy like 20 of them and then you're like, well, this is a good investment. It as a business itself. thing? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we'll see what happens when that happens. But I don't think. Just people don't have the money to buy the car. So this is the way they'll use it. True. I see what you're saying. Right. Or so sort of like renting. So like people will own yeah. it and then like, you know what I mean? Like how we, we rent an apartment right now. We don't own the apartment. Um, so we pay like a cheaper rate. Yeah. 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 I, I think people would more generate. So what you're saying is the rich will stay rich and the poor will stay poor. Yeah. Of course. Or the... the or the poor will have more will money. Get, yeah. I mean, I don't want to pay. How will the poor get more money though? No, you're, you're saving on buying a car. Right. I see what you're saying. I mean, it's just what people are doing with uh, Uber right now, right? Yeah, no, no, true, true. Yeah, I it's just you're, like it would just generate money, but you, no one has. You don't have to drive it. You don't have to be in the driver's seat. Right. So if you're like, like some Uber rich billionaire, and you buy like five hundred of these, and then that's your whole business income. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's like. Yeah, I mean, we'll see what happens. Um, uh. It's a good question to have, I guess, but I just don't think. I think if 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 they see an actual generation, like profit generation, people are seeing like a lot more than mm -hmm. that could happen, and then that'll be, I don't know, 
It's just more incentive to flood the market with your vehicles before anyone else. I think that's basically what they want to do, of course, right? Or maybe that's like Elon Musk's way of getting more people to buy it, like the big business types who like see... Who would help it, yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, right, still right now, they're not making profit as a company. So Tesla? Yeah. Well... They need to do something like this. Yeah. Like yeah, a yeah. generate... But wait, hold on. Even though they're not making profit, are they still liquid? Like, can they pay their debts? Uh, they're making, uh, they're getting, uh, what's that called, investors and things like that. Hmm. Yeah, it's funny how that works, eh? They've been surviving like this for a long time. That's what, that's what I'm saying. It's funny how business works like that. We run off of, like, a system. See, this is what I mean about, like, why you can't uh, vilify this stuff, like, stock market and stuff. Because people are like, oh, like, there's stock market's evil, whatever, whatever. But yeah. it's like, no, that's how that works. Like, debt is how we build the structures that we have, mm. you know? Yeah. yeah 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 so yeah basically and then um in that thing it was just kind of funny like how we would attack another like i think um gm and um i think it's ford or other like even uber they're like working on uh self-driving or um not so yeah self-driving autonomous i mean mm. but they're using a technology called like it's like lighter okay lighter technology and uh, he, he just like basically attacked that. Oh really? Yeah, he just said like. Um, what was the difference? No, just lighter is uh, like a bulky thing, waste of money, and uh, it's not. It won't be good. It won't work out. Well, he's got to say that though. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like. Yeah, of course he's got. He's say that, but it's just funny. Like, it just. But he's right though too in the sense of how how it does look. It does look kind of ugly. Hmm. So, so, for like, if he wants to design something that looks nice. He's already doing it without doing lighter, without doing that. He's got cameras and all that around the car right, right, right. and the sensors already working for him. Like, you know what I mean? Like designed that way. So, yeah, I thought that was a pretty cool. Like it, this was more like we knew this was the plan. This is more of like now how they've set up the now they've like actually like they're making the app for the robo taxi mm-hmm. and they're, they're setting it all up and how this is going to go forward. In the next, nice. next Robo year. Taxi. That's really cool. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. So wait, why don't they just sell those themselves? Like why? No, that's what they, they would no, do. No, that. Sorry, not, not sell. Use them. it as Uber. Yeah. Why? Yeah, they would do that. Oh, so okay. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. So he's like. There's also another way to generate for them. Yeah. With them, yeah. So, but why don't you just push that into the market instead of telling everyone, "Hey, if you buy our thing, you can make passive income too." Why don't you just collect all that passive income? They would, they would. They would. They would do both. <laughs> hmm. Interesting. Why not? Why not do both? I don't know. I just. I just wonder why they would even tell people that other people. It's like you're giving away your business idea. Uh, I mean, yeah, but they said it themselves that they're doing it. They're gonna do it too. I believe. That's cool. I like that. Elon Musk, genius, genius of our time. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately. Let's see how this goes. I mean, this is. One thing to know about Elon is he's pretty um, ambitious, but doesn't always fit to the timeline that he wants it to be, I guess. So right. Some kind of kinks and stuff happen in between. So. Right. Actually, you know what? I'm going to change my second topic. I'm not my first topic. Okay. Uh, and put it more in line with this one. Uh, so are you done? Yeah. All right, cool. So we studied – not sorry, we didn't study, but like I, I was in on like interviewing this person from UFT. And they are studying microplastics, mm. right? And this is like goes in line with like Elon Musk because I was yeah. like, wow, like we're heading towards a cool future, but simultaneously, like we're also kind of destroying our world. Actually, no, wait, wait. This is this is another. T- all right, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> so I'm I'm actually because I had four topics and I was like, which one mm. am I going to choose? All okay. right, so this is going to be. I know how to link it all now. Okay, okay cool, cool, cool. So I was studying microplastics. Um, I was interviewing somebody who was studying microplastics. And yeah. basically what it is, yeah. is the biggest takeaway, uh, and this is not like secret information because like I'm editing the video now and mm-hmm. I'll like drop it. Okay. Um, so plastic doesn't break down, it breaks up. Yeah. That was like her gold line. And right, I was like, right. oh, that's so cool. So like even though we can't see it, the particles are still there, if not in the air. And she said that like when you're in a movie theater and you see like things that look like dust, it's typically usually not dust, it's like plastic. Mm-hmm. So like they, fine. Yeah, plastic, like very right. fine. Yeah. So like they're even finding that like in the Arctic, if you yeah. um 
if you like leave a petri dish because they're like oh it's also in our air and i'm like we're Mm -hmm. they're showing me like the petri dish and i was like oh like how do you um how do you where is the plastic right and they're like oh it's there you just can't see it so like what they do is they take a double-sided tape they Mm -hmm. leave it out in the um, wherever there and like i think they said the arctic and then they like bring it back to the lab and they're noticing that it, on the it, on the double sided tape it's plastic not not like not the plastic okay. of the tape but like there's plastic stuck on the tape yeah. right all right and um yeah it's it's interesting because like i was like okay so what can we really do about this cuz we rely so heavily on plastics like you don't notice mm-hmm. how much plastic we have around us yeah if not even derivatives of plastic okay all right and what it really got me thinking about but i've thinking about this for a while is like we're such a cancer to the earth yeah you know that like we will that's not like a negative thing it's just like how cancer or a virus viruses do the same thing mm-hmm. they like they take every all the resources from the host and they move forward and they take all the resources from the host and they move forward okay cancer does that too like kills your cells like right yeah and like we we've kind of set up our society in a way that's like the exact same thing but it all started from the industrial revolution when we started discovering oil Mm -hmm. you know because oil was like the biggest thing that like provided the most detriment to the world okay you know that's where we get our plastics and that's that's causing like um climate change and stuff right okay but when we were hunter gatherers we were a part of the world yeah you know what i'm saying we lived in a nice balance and then like all of a sudden we hit this point where we just obsessed over getting more and more and more uh okay you know what i'm saying yeah, okay yeah well what are your thoughts it sounds like you're thinking about something uh i'm just saying like uh like i get i see what the when they say balance but i mean like uh when a volcano hits it's not necessarily balanced then True. Yeah. No, no. But I mean, like, like that's what I but mean. But a, a volcano's like, not really like thinking. No, I know. That, that's not what, I, what I'm just saying. Was that maybe what we're doing is inevitably Earth will come back to its own balance after. Oh, you mean it's cyclical? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that well, amazingly, you and I are going to see Graham Hancock next week, yeah. and his studies are all about that, where um, we think that civilization is as old as our academia will tell us but in reality he's finding more and more evidence Mm -hmm. uh, of the contrary that it's much older and what the assumption is Mm -hmm. is either they don't exactly know he believes it's asteroidal impacts but other uh, Robert Schock believes it's like the um, uh, the sun like a solar flare and that or it could have been climate change who knows but like Mm -hmm. what what he's saying is that like we've been here before okay and it's almost like we've just his his great line is like we're a species with amnesia right yeah so what you're suggesting could be the same thing it's like we're going to push ourselves to a breaking point where most of the world dies off and the only people that will survive are hunter gatherers Mm -hmm. right and then how long does it take for them to learn as much as they can to get us back to this point right you know yeah. yeah, cyclical, as you said. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It's like, but it's just fascinating that it works in this way. And then there's a lot of, like, evidence to... Yeah. Well, what's up? No, 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 yeah, yeah. There's, there's also a lot of evidence to support this because, like, in old Greek texts, they believe in, like, different ages where it's, like, Bronze Age, Silver Age, Gold Age, right? And it's, like... Yeah, even, even, in, they even in Hinduism. Say, they have, oh, there you go, yeah. right? So even in they say that, like humans have been through multiple stages and what they say is that once you hit the gold age that's where we abuse the earth it's an amazing time to be alive right Right. just like now but we're abusing the earth and then it's gonna like reset us again right it's sort of like uh final fantasy 7 remember we watched it they were they were pulling so much right 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 and And then 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 again and then like we looked at and then it's like the final scene 500 (laughs) later it's like 500 years later it's like nature took back the city yeah and we were like what happened i i I think that's what it is i think that's what's going to happen yeah, it could be, yeah. I mean, I don't see why not. I mean, I don't think anything that we're doing is necessarily against... Uh, no, no, totally. No, no, you no. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, for they, sure. I mean, this, is the, the, uh, this planet created us, mm. and we're doing... We often we were, forget that we are nature. Yeah, 
and we're doing what we're meant to do in the sense. If, if you look at um, if you look at so, Hinduism, yeah, and Shiva is one of the greatest gods, okay. right? Yeah, uh, but he's the destroyer, and mm-hmm. it's like, but that's kind of what all humans, all, all of creation is destruction, right? Mm. So it's like, so they believe in like uh, uh, Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva, yeah, creation destruction and sustenance yeah. right so it's almost like they were they were given they were anthropomorphizing mm-hmm. like these tendencies in right, nature right. where it's like yeah we are always creating things but simultaneously for your creation to survive it must destroy another thing mm-hmm. right so like think about like okay we need paper okay let's create paper but you must destroy the tree to give you the resources for right. the paper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then in the lag time between the creation and destruction, mm-hmm. there's sustenance. It's just it's just maintaining itself. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like this yeah. this is not like it's not good or bad. It just is what it is. Mm-hmm. And we often forget that. Like me saying we are a cancer, it's not a negative thing. It's just like yeah. the tendency, right? <laughs> what did I say last time? Was... Uh, cancer lives matter. <laughs> yeah. It's true though. Oh, yeah. You know, it's like, <laughs> but we forget this, and it's like, that's true. I wouldn't sacrifice where I am now to go back in time to be a hunter gatherer. No. Yeah. Because if I, because like the beauty of this time is, especially where we live, it's like if I want to experience that, I can experience that, but then I can also go back to the city. Yeah, you know, like when I yeah, when right, we right. travel back to like our homelands, right? Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, I'm living in like a hut village now. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, you can live that way for a little bit and then enjoy the experience. But what if you could never come back from it and you're like, mm. you know? But that's kind of the time frame that it was before. Yeah, you know, so right, right. That's why I like the the time that we're in now. But yeah, golden age. So it is what it is, man. I've I've really been thinking about that, especially the microplastics in the air thing. Mm-hmm. And it's like we've just like totally destroyed our system. And then I asked the person, I was like, Well, but we live in a city, so doesn't that mean we're just being poisoned all the time? And she's like, Yeah, especially like it's not really like plastics in the yeah. air at that point. It's mm-hmm. like tires. Right, right. Because right, when right. you're driving across the road, that's breaking up plastic. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. But and we think it's like, oh, it's just de- deteriorating. It's like, no, no, it's just breaking down. It doesn't mm. break up. I mean, I, mean, it, I knew it breaks about, up, I, doesn't I, break down. Yeah, I remember like, uh, like getting taught taught that like a long time ago about plastics. Yeah, but yeah, you don't think of it ne- like necessarily like happening around you. Yeah, for sure. And it's, it's it's funny that you yeah. said that you taught you were taught that. Was that in school? Yeah, engineering, right? Uh, I don't remember, but yeah, okay. So probably. like, she's studying like ecosystems yeah and one thing that she said was um uh like how we need like a discussion like a round table discussion with all these people it's like but if you already heard about it mm-hmm. why are they only discovering it in their field now um, you know what i'm saying it's like it, information is not very um like free-flowing kind of thing i don't think it's that i think uh, so generally I, it's just science is a slower process in the sense for of sure. to, to get evidence. Like you can have um, hypotheses or so, like or like like they knew about. Wait, wait. Let me just throw this out there. I allegedly spoke with this person. There you go. <laughs> then you then you cover yourself. All right, go ahead. Yeah, you're saying. Um, like, like in general sense, we know that plastics doesn't break down. Right. So. But then to, this is like another level of science what you're talking about, which is more specific to like what happens like in the finer particles. Right? We don't think about that and how right. we're breathing that in. That's, that's what I'm saying. But what, what's funny is like that's common sense, right? Like it's like if you learn that, that plastic doesn't break, break down, then you're like, wait, doesn't that just like extrapolate further into like other things you know what I'm saying like it yeah I mean I'm, but, that's but like, then there's no field of study actually testing it but it's like we kind of knew it but we just didn't have it validated it's almost like it's almost like if you have like a someone tumor, has to study it right someone has right, right, to right, have the interest to go into it for, for sure but what, what I'm yeah. saying is it's almost like having a giant tumor that looks cancerous but you're like hey I didn't get it verified that it's cancer 
So, <laughs> you know, it's almost like ing- ignorance is bliss at that point. Right. You know? Like, we all knew, pl- well, not we all, because I didn't know about this, but you knew in your studies that plastic doesn't break down. So it's like, okay, yeah, like, what, are, what are the yeah. effects of that? You yeah. know, like, it's kind of obvious what the effects would be, mm. but it's like, oh, we didn't validate it. So technically, we can keep selling it. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, they're still going to keep selling it. It's just... <laughs> yeah, for sure. Conve- this, the convenience of it was it's too, too good right now. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's it's in this book, Ecological Intelligence, too. It's like, you don't, even though Elon Musk's thing about, like, electricity seems very altruistic, at the same time, it's like, unless your entire supply chain is altruistic, then not all of it is. Mm-hmm. And then it's not actually altruistic. You know what I'm saying? So, um, so, like, if you're like, oh, because mine are electric vehicles, I'm helping to combat climate change. Okay, but it's like, yeah, but you made, you use like plastics for your tires and those factories contribute to climate change. So it's like, is the vehicle still a champion against climate change? Not really, because it still requires things that like contribute to climate change. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You can't escape it. I, this is why I've just hit acceptance at this point. It's like, it is what it is. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. I, yeah, I think it's difficult to um, make it. Oh, yeah, another thing I wanted to add with that one, I forgot, was... Um, Your topic? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just right. to, since you mentioned Elon, just remembered, he wants to try to make the car last a long time. Oh, cool. Like, uh, like a thousand years? Is he going to make it out of plastic? <laughs> like drivable for I, this is really really ambitious I don't know how, how when he's going to reach that but so it could last for at least one million miles oh for driving the car so. that's cool I don't know what a general car gets up to yeah, but, I don't know uh, what that means so. well a million miles I think like car starts breaking down around 300 thousand kilometers so miles I don't know something like that like Sure, I, I something like that. I'm I'm not a gearhead. I don't know either, but it just sounds cool when he says it. <laughs> yeah, it does sound cool. All right, so what's your next topic? Ah, my next topic. So as I play the game, uh, it's about. Well, we are since we're not watching it. It's too bad this week, but next week we're watching it, and we'll be the review next week for Adventures End Game. And End Game is the end. Well, you didn't know about this. The end of their phase three. Of Marvel movies. Okay. So they just had like different phases. So it's like what's their plan and like how it's going to break down and what movies they're making on each different different phases of the uh, the years or whatever it was that they would have. Okay. So uh, so this it took about what ten years more now sure. to reach this point where it's now the end of or the the Thanos story comes to an end, or well, I don't know. I don't know what happens in the movie. So, mm-hmm. this is the uh, like a critical period, I guess. Okay. The end of phase three. Okay. So no, it's just like now. What's what's next now? Because we 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 knew of their different movies before. Oh, Captain it's America so three. It's so lucrative. They can't be stopping they, now. Uh, yeah, of course. Yeah. No, I know. I'm just <laughs> right. saying that. Yeah, yeah it's joke. like because you can easily. Oh yeah, like we got. Like, we have had how many Iron Man movies? Like, all this stuff. Now mm-hmm. it's come to this. And a lot of people's contracts are coming to an end. And what does that mean? So that's uh-huh. the end of Phase 3, right? So I just want to bring up, like, what movies that they have for the future. Okay. And we already know some since the trailers have been released. For at least one of them. Spider-Man? Yeah. So Spider-Man, Far From Home, will be the next one. Okay. And then, then we've got potential Black Widow movie. Oh, I heard about that. So I, it's funny that they took so, like they made the first, like all, is it all female? Like the female lead, I mean, mm-hmm. was not Black Widow, but was... Uh, Captain Marvel. Yeah. Yeah. Which was just funny that they did that. Now, like I think people have been asking, like, why is there no Black Widow movie? Like, why? 
a uh, side note about Cap Marvel, I was watching her Jimmy Fallon interview. Yeah. And when she filmed that scene, it's interesting how, how secretive they keep Marvel movies. So when she was filming that scene, they're like, all right. You know that like little um, teaser at the end of her movie? Yeah. Like, where's Fury? Mm-hmm. So she comes on set. She didn't know she was filming for Avengers. Oh, yeah, it was interesting. interesting. Yeah, she like they're like, okay, we need to fly you here and then come, whatever, whatever. And she's like, who's in this movie? And then they're like, oh, we can't talk about it. She's like, who's here at the <laughs> studio? We can't talk about it. And then only until when she got there, it's like, oh, I'm filming for Avengers. Oh, I see. Right, but anyways, so she filmed that. She filmed that one. Well, she filmed Avengers before she filmed her solo movie. Oh, yeah, and she also filmed that ending scene from her solo movie before she filmed her movie. Interesting. And what they did was they're like, okay, there are, we can't tell you who's in the room, but there are five people in this room, and all we want you to say is, where's Fury? And then she's like, okay. <laughs> and she's like, can I get a tape tape marker? And they're like, yeah, sure, sure. So then she like just filmed the scene, and then when she saw her own movie and the, spo- and like the little teaser at the end, she's like, oh, that's what they made me do. Oh, that's very interesting. Yeah. Interesting, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so fascinating. It's very interesting how they, they like has kept like very secretive like on of these things and because people like Tom Holland keep spoiling it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, somehow he got known for that. I don't know what he did exactly. He said like die, they're dying or something, they're dead. Really? He said something? Yeah, something like that and he's like, "Oh <laughs> my god." Yeah, yeah. So they had to restructure everything because of this guy? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> him and uh, him and Bruce Banner as well. Oh, really? Like, yeah. Both of them are notorious for um, letting the cat out of the bag. Anyways, so you're saying? Um, so, phase four. Yeah, phase four. So we're going to get Black Widow. Nice. They're looking into that. Uh, I Have you ever heard of The Eternals? Nope. I have no idea what that is either. Uh, I guess that they're all like... I don't know anything about them. Anyways, so that's... They're saying... Uh, Offshoot of Early Man. Superpowered offshoot of Early Man. What's Early Man? I don't know. They're like immortals, I guess. Functional immortals. Oh, like the Asgardians, the Eternals. I don't know who they, what the Eternals have a heavy hand in shaping Earth's mythology. Okay, cool. Okay. So Oh, it's like the Seven Sages. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they're gonna give us the Greek sages. lore and stuff like that. Oh that's cool. Interesting. Interesting. So I'll, maybe I'll look into that. So there's a date for Doctor Strange 2. Cool. I like that movie. It's pretty good. Yeah. So I thought we he died. It was very, like, <laughs> drug-related. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, it was like he was uh, going to the DMT world. Quick pause, speaking of the DMT world. So I thought this was fascinating. So I just heard on the Joe Rogan podcast with Graham Hancock, there's this university that they're going to be uh, intravenously administering DMT into people. Mm-hmm. Um, and what they're doing is they're going to continuously do it so that people can enter into that world and then map out the DMT world. So they're going to hold you in that zone. <laughs> It's almost like freaking Inception. Yeah, I was gonna. It sounds right? like a show, like something I've seen. That's crazy, right? But here's the even crazier part: yeah. the Egyptians did the same thing. Okay. So, like, when I when you study it, uh, Egyptian lore. Yeah. What they used to do is like they were obsessed with. Um, it was the blue water lily, and okay. it was like really high in DMT. Mm. And what the Egyptians used to do is like that's why they have the Egyptian Book of the Dead. Yeah. They would. They would administer these DMT drugs mm. and then they would write about it like what they had experienced and that's where they got like Anubis and all that stuff yeah yeah you know what I mean it's crazy um, right yeah, yeah it's yeah. almost like we're doing the exact same thing again repeating itself yeah it, exactly it's crazy <laughs> right yeah it's amazing yeah anyways yeah Doctor Strange is very like drug related yeah I wonder like he was like on acid or something right like, right mushrooms. right so that is expected for May 21st, or May 2021. Sick. So we got some time to wait. So this is all part of Phase 4, Black Panther 2. So basically all these people with movies did not die. No, because they just, I mean, they were all new. They just had one movie, right? No, for sure. So we would expect them to, of course, have more. T'Challa. So yeah, that's also 2021 for Black Panther 2. Nice. And there's an interesting one. 
Shang Chi. Ever heard of him? No, I've not. <laughs> I've heard of Iron Fist though. So yeah, so it's not. He doesn't have superpowers necessarily. I think. He's just an awesome martial artist. Yes. That's cool. Yeah, he's. Uh, it was created in in the 1970s. This comic or Shang Chi. Wow, it's almost like they're just picking the most random people to make movies out of now. Well, I mean, I think when they did The Guardians, that was the random one to see if that would be successful. And they're like, oh, wow, this is actually super very successful. Yeah. True. So, and now they can try different ones that we don't More know. More obscure, esoteric ones. Yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. I think uh, I think that's a good thing. Good. If, yeah, that's no, cool. can make a good story out of it. So they're trying to get, for this one, they're trying to make it all, of course, an Asian lead. And then got an Asian director. Uh-huh. Uh, and an Asian writer, I believe. Cool. So is it going to be um, John <laughs> Cho again? John Cho? Who's that? Oh, is it the guy of Cowboy Bebop? So they haven't had a, they haven't picked an actor yet. They have a director. That was a joke. Oh, sorry. Like John Cho. Is it Jane? Who's the guy of Cowboy Bebop? Oh, James that Cho? guy. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I didn't really. Because he plays I didn't all make the, that connection. He plays all the Asian people, so it's like. Uh, it probably won't be him. Oh, okay, good. He's not a. I don't think he's that. Again, <laughs> he's not Marvel, or he's not like that level. You know what I mean? What are you saying, bro? <laughs> he needs to get on those. Uh, <laughs> he needs to get a uh, better agent yeah. or something. <laughs> no, that's not what I meant. I meant just <laughs> caliper of an actor. That's, I don't think that they would hire him. That's so funny. <laughs> we no no. I'm thinking about the the steroids. It's like, cause like steroids is a big thing in UFC right now. But it's like how uh-huh. many athlete uh, not athletes how many actors take that you're right 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 just saying okay good good job yes okay <laughs> hmm. so this is just rumors for that one uh, possibly filming in sydney that's the part of that rumor sydney australia yep cool yeah so and then uh, of course we have to wait for, we have we have to get a uh, gardens galaxy third uh, th- volume three i mean third. nice uh so i believe he's back that James Gunn fella was rehired. Who's James Gunn? Uh, so there was like a controversy, something that happened last year, uh-huh. and then James they let James Gunn go, but it was like some tweet or something that was like a long time ago. Okay. And it was out of context or something. Okay. Uh, so Disney fired him Ooh. or let him go, and then then there was a whole um, thing about the the Drax character. He was like, I'm not going to do the film you don't hire him back oh wow yeah so then there was then they put it on hiatus for a bit mm-hmm. they're like okay let's so then a year later they finally... then uh, they rehired james gunn and um nice so uh so now they're continuing with volume three filming what a weird what a weird world we live in <laughs> it's like oh you made this tweet a hundred years ago and now we're gonna penalize you for it uh, as if people don't change I, or, you know it's i weird. think uh like how that happened was I don't remember exactly the full story, like And then what's even weirder though is like you boycotted it and then you got in his job back. Well because then Again, they weird. because it realized that uh it was out of context or it was a, like when it was originally put on in the story was wrong information or something like that. Okay. So that's why there was a whole like that's why the actor was like, Yeah, I'm not gonna do this film if you don't rehire him and things like that. Okay. What's happening? Anyway, so now he's back, and they're continuing with volume three. Cool. And so then they have, I guess it should be, would be considered under phase four or not. Since the Disney Plus is coming, they've got shows on there now. Okay. That are, uh, I don't know, like, so there's Falcon and Winter Soldier together. Oh, cool. And I guess they're making a... Isn't Falcon uh, Captain America's, like, friend? Yep. Isn't Winter Soldier Captain also, America's other friend? Yes. So we know that Captain America dies in this movie. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure exactly when this takes place. Uh, I'm betting he dies. Tony Stark <laughs> and Captain America both die. All right. <laughs> Just by, then, uh, by hearing that, I mean, right, like, why right. would you cut out Captain America from that? It would be a trio. Uh, it would be a I duo. mean, uh, Captain America and Falcon, or Captain America and it could be, yeah, it could be. Winter I mean, Soldier. He's going to ask for too much money, Captain America. So these oh. guys haven't had their own thing. So true. Okay. And also true. You know. <laughs> and then I don't. I did not hear about this. Uh, Wanda Vision. 
don't, I don't know. They're making his title up. Um, I guess between what happened between uh, her and Vision during that time that they were away. I guess. Oh, cool. In the first event, uh, in the which one? Infinity War one, because mm-hmm. they were like randomly somewhere else. Oh, so there is it like. Um, I guess a story about them. Like blast from the past kind of thing, or it's not. It's not the future, right? Uh, it could be the past. Yeah, it could be the past. Mm, makes yeah. sense. Yeah. That's cool. And then uh, I believe they're doing something for Loki in the Disney Plus. Mm. Mm. And then a uh, story about Hawkeye because he was missing in Infinity War as well. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's all of Phase Four, I believe. So there's no. Um... They're doing, I guess, all obscure. Like no, some of them are. Like there's no Thor, movie. Yeah, there's no Thor on this list. Or maybe they're just choosing not to release that yet. Well, this is. Uh, they've only sh- said some movies that they're working on. So some of these are again added on rumors and other information that may have leaked. Oh, I see. I see. So this is there's no official phase four but until these are, this these movie's are out. I think until until after Endgame, after some time, then they'll probably show off what their phase four plan is. Cool. Yeah. Cool. I like that. That's yeah. awesome. Oh yeah. Speaking of superheroes, this is actually not a good link, but <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> actually no, it is a good link. Here we go. Check this out. Check this out. Right. Watch this. Watch this. So, speaking of movies. If you watch your life as a sped up movie, oh, yeah, you would notice that we are but fractals of the choices we've made in our past. Okay. Which I find really interesting because, like, you're always in the moment of what it is you're doing now, right? Mm-hmm. So, like, we're always, we always think of ourselves from this moment, right? Or who we want to become. Okay. We never think of ourselves as who we were. Okay. Right? Like, most people are like, like Western society is all about where do I want to go and what am I doing right now? Nobody, like people rarely think about where we came from. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, it's interesting. Cause like, if you, if you look at who you are now mm-hmm. and then you look at your past, you can actually see the lines, the dots that were connected. Yeah. You know, you see like that's a uh, iconic Steve jobs line. Right, like you can only connect the dots looking back, right. not never forward, and like it reminded me of like, because like you're really into watching shows and stuff, yeah. and like I've known you since I was like seven or something, <laughs> okay. like so long, yeah, and yeah. like remember when you used to like every Friday would be like your vanilla Coke and Cheetos, <laughs> you know, yeah. and then you'd always watch movies, and then still you do that stuff, and it's like, like if if I were to look at you now, I'm like, wow, you watch a lot of movies, but it's like, no, this is what you've been doing right since time yeah yeah, yeah. you know and i think like a big indicator of who people are Mm -hmm. is who people like past choices are great predictors for future events i think okay you know and like we take for granted who we were Mm -hmm. and i think sometimes if people start to feel like they're getting lost in life that they should just take a moment to remember who they once were and then, like, try and yeah. move. Like, that's why they're like, oh, I found my inner kid again. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, those were easier times and stuff. But then you just got to find that one point where you just became jaded, you know? There's a point where, like, we all, like, grow up, quote, unquote. Mm-hmm. For me, like, I, I don't consider it, like, growing up. I consider it, like, going inside. Because, right. you know, okay. we used to play outside all the time. Yeah, yeah, and, then, yeah. like, we just come up with harebrained schemes all the time outside. Like, I wonder if we can do this. Let's, let's call this person out. Let's play some, like, uh, manhunt. You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah, yeah. like stuff like that. And then like, oh, it's time to go inside. It's time to do your homework. Mm-hmm. Oh, we got to go to school the next day. You know what I mean? Like there's, there's that cutoff point. Yeah. And right. like, it's like, when did you in your life decide to cut off from excitement? Mm-hmm. You know, I'm actually reading this article right now okay. but about it um, called I'll Never Grow Up. Mm-hmm. And like, it just reminded me of that Peter Pan thing where, like, the Lost Boys. Right. Right? I've actually had this thought multiple times. It's, it's weird because, like, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's weird because, like, it's like, how can you say this so confidently? Me. Mm-hmm. Like, as a third person being like, how can you say this so confidently? It's like, but I've been thinking about this for a long time. And, like, only now after studying multiple things and, like, right. experiencing a bunch of things, like, no, I was onto something. You know, I'm still on onto... I feel like 
we all know what we should do as children, which is like enjoy our experience, be one, be in like wonder. Yeah. You know, but then there's a point where we just get tired of our experience. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Oh, it's like kind of sad. Uh, yeah, maybe there's a reason. I mean, like, like, but that's what I'm thinking too. Like, like nature wise, like when you hit 25 or whatever, your brain fully develops and then you start thinking. Actually, somebody told me that my, uh, my cousin once told me that. Cause I was, I was like, uh, teaching mm-hmm. martial arts. I was like yeah. 22 or something. Right. And then he, oh, he's like, Hey, you want like kids one day? You want a house one day? I'm like, no man, no kids for me. Hmm. And like no house. I'm just going to be a martial artist forever. And he's like, Oh, that'll change. And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, well, when you're like 25, your brain like solidifies. And I'm sure like as you get older, you're going to start thinking about, you know, practicality and stuff. And I did go through that phase, but then I was like, wait, what am I doing? Right. You know, like. Why do I want to become like everyone else? I mean, like, sure, I have a job right now, but like, you need money. But it's like, it's not like, why do we still do this podcast? Why do we still talk? Why do we play video games? Because yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah. I'm just merging practicality with like yeah. hunger for life, mm-hmm. you know? And I feel like a lot of people just aren't hungry anymore. As they get older. As they get older, you yeah. know? Like, when we were kids, we would do anything to just find some sort of adventure, you know? Mm hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess our minds are more active at the time. Like, we're more, maybe more energetic. Everything's new, you know? Everything's like, new, yeah. Everything, more and then, energetic. And then we hit this point where we think we know everything. And we're like, you know what I mean? But yeah, like, we do hit that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, That's what do. I mean. And we're like, ah, oh, I know what that's about. Yeah, yeah. whatever. <laughs> and it's like, no, that just makes life boring, you know? You don't know. No. You know? Yeah. Like, even though you could be at the most mundane job. Let's say, like, you uh, freaking... You work in a factory, yeah. and you're making like cogs for a living. Mm-hmm. Cogs are those like little, little widgets, you okay, know. Okay. Like everyone needs widgets. That's like that's just the classic business example. They always say like, "Oh, you have a widget factory." Yeah. Anyways, so like, let's say your day to day is about widgets, but it's like you never know what that day is really going to entail, mm-hmm. you know. But we start to get in this groove where it's like, "Oh, every day is going to be the same. It's going to be monotonous." And then you hit this breaking point of monotony and you're like, you know, midlife crisis. Right. But it's like my entire life is a midlife crisis. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I like to think of it like my entire life's like a summertime. Okay. Because it's like in summer we could do whatever we want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's weird. Yeah, we'll see what this, because, you know, internet has changed a, For sure. a lot of our generation. But But what I think the point to stress, though, is like, always take a moment to reflect on how far you've come and where you've come from. Right. Because that will give you, like, even though people are like, who cares about the past? It's over. Let's figure out what we're doing now and where we want to go. It's like, but the past will give you like analyzing your past will give you the correct foundation Mm -hmm. to understand where, who it is you are in this moment and where it is you can go. Right. Uh, You know what I mean? Like a lot of people think like, I want to go here, but it's like, can you even go there? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like a lot of people have a lot of good ideas, but how many people ex- execute on those ideas? Right. Yeah. You know, um, my forever favorite story, uh, I'm probably going to chop this one up and Wob's going to listen to it. Cause like, this is my hands down favorite motivational story ever. I was, Wob was working at eight, six media, follow him. He's pretty dope. Uh, he was working in a factory and then I was biking one time. I was, I was teaching martial arts and he's like, He's like, hey, BJ, like, I haven't seen you in a long time. Like, we hung out, and then like, he's like, yeah, we're in his factory, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, man, that's a sad life, bro. And I was like, you should you used to always inspire me by making videos. Like, you should do that again. And then he was like, yeah, I should do that again. And then like we left, and I was like, yeah, good luck. Nobody ever – like, I always inspire people, but I never like see them follow through on it. Right. And then I saw him the next week, and he's like, yo, I quit my job. I maxed out my credit cards. I bought laptop, camera gear, and I'm just going to go for it. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> but he was always like that. Right. You know what I mean? Like when we were kids, if I just put an idea into his head or he put an idea into my head, it would be like, all right, let's just run with it. Mm-hmm. See where we're going to go. F it. You know? You know what I mean? Like that's him. Right, right, but right. Why, how come he can do that and other people can't? It's fractals, man. It's just who you become over time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, fascinating, right? But that's what I mean. Like just freaking... But you can always change it, you know? But it's hard to change. That's the thing. It's like, even though we're fractals and it's like everyone can accomplish anything, it's like, yeah, we can, but 
is hard when you've habituated for so long right. to this pattern. Yeah, yeah. You know? That's the other thing, yeah. Just, if you, yeah. I mean, like, Wob's married now, so I can't really, like, get him into harebrained schemes because, like, I'm sure he's thinking about, like, practicality. But, like, if I was, like, yo, I had this great idea. Mm-hmm. We, I got $10,000 funding. Let's go travel the world and film a doc. He'd be like, hell yeah. Like, yeah. I know he would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? He'd probably have a hard time with marriage. They'd be like, what are you doing? <laughs> but, like... I, he's just that kind of person, but that's oh, yeah. what he would do as a kid. I'd be like, "Yo, I found this really dope spot. Let's bike to it. It's gonna take us four hours." He'd be like, "All right," <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Fractals, man. But you can always like change the fractal, but it's like you gotta you know, work towards changing. It. Yeah, like steps. You know, in a sense, right? it's like when the mind, basically, the mind has created grooves. We're, yeah, you know, and like those. What do you call it? It's like you get neuroplasticity, but like the um, the neural pathways mm-hmm. have been etched so deep. Right. It's like addiction too, you know. Like. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's kind of like that. It's like that. Yeah. Right. You can yeah. you can change your habituation, but it's just gonna take work, and not many people are willing to put in the work. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. But I mean, like, simultaneously, you could be listening to me and, like, looking at my life and being like, yeah, this guy's nuts. And it's like, but, yeah, but I'm habituated to be nuts. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> right, yeah. it's, I, I don't think I've, ch- I think the people that are, like, see, what I find funny is, like, when you listen to, like, um, like, celebrities who've made it, like, let's say Joe Rogan or something, who made, like, a lot of money and they're still, like, they act like a big kid. He's mm-hmm. like, I still think I'm, like, 24 in my mind. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah But yeah. then there are, like, other people who get sold a bill of goods and they're like oh you're like 40 now and you have to buy this mortgage it's Mm -hmm. like why do i gotta buy the mortgage yeah that's because society told you to okay true true you know what i'm saying yeah actually fun fact that is a marketing tactic i forgot what it was called like the exact term for it but what they'll do is like it's big for insurance companies. They sell you a life story just so that they can sell their insurance. Yeah, of course. <laughs> but they but they program it into society so that they can make money off of people, mm-hmm. you know? And, like, some people buy it. I think that's why I like marketing a lot because it's all about mind manipulation. And, like, what society tries to do is make you forget about your passion and your passions about life, mm-hmm. you know? And yeah. then, like, you get things like Somebody will take friggin' mushrooms and then they'll be like, oh my God, I didn't realize the world was so amazing. I got to quit my job and stuff. And then everyone's looking at them like they're crazy, but it's like, they may be crazy. I'm not saying that they're not crazy, but (laughs) like, it's like, if you always live in that zone of wonderment, then you won't seem crazy because it only, it'll, it's only when you like change so drastically, like, you know what I'm saying? Like if you spend your entire life not entire life, but, like, if you if you get jaded and then all of a sudden you start, like, hating life. Yeah. And then one day you find your enjoyment of life. And then people will be like, what happened to you? You, like, change as a person. But if you're always in the enjoyment of life, then nothing you do seems weird. Mm-hmm. You know? Like, I could probably do something now that, like, would be so left field and you'd be like, oh, that's you, though. Like, you do this a lot. You know what I mean? Like, if, if I was, like, I don't know. Like, I've done a bunch of weird stuff already. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure yeah, I could yeah. do martial arts for the rest of my life. Okay. No, no, it's all about yoga now, bro. All right, right now I'm going to get this job. Like, okay. Like, phases. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's one thing that you have. Yeah, phases. <laughs> yeah, I go through phases. Like, hardcore. Oh, I want to be in this band. I want to tour the world. Okay. But you know what I mean? But yeah. I, I, that's just, like, wonderment of life. I think because it's like oh this is so cool let me see how far down the rabbit hole goes mm-hmm. and you're like oh it's not that cool anymore <laughs> I'm bored I'm gonna move on right yeah but I also think that's why it's important to have like small circles because like if you only have your friends in phase groups then you can like drop them super easily at least I can <laughs> you know what I'm saying but like <laughs> but for me I have like I have like a very fine like very small group of people right. that I always associate with mm-hmm. no matter what the phase. Right. But when I'm in those phases, 
I make a hell of a lot of friends. Mm-hmm. But then when that phase is done, it's like, you weren't a part of the circle, though. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Right. <laughs> yeah. Which I, I find people... Wow, this is turning so negative. But, but, like, <laughs> but like, like, I just find that like people are like... Like, really, mm-hmm. how many people can you rely on? You know what I mean? And it's like, mm-hmm. if you have friends in a phase, then it's like very transient. It's like, what if you get tired of that? Do you still hold that same interest? Right. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I guess. So. Yeah, true. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It's not really about fractals anymore. It's more <laughs> like my <laughs> psychological makeup. <laughs> but I mean, I guess that is fractals though, right? Yeah, so yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's all part of it. Yeah. But it's all part I don't know. Yeah. And then it's weird because then you like you find people that haven't mm-hmm. that have like like transitory friends. Okay. So it's like trans like transient friends. And it's like Okay. Like they'll be like like one of the, the thing I hated the most is like when you're in school and they're like, This is my best friend mm-hmm. and then like year like grade eleven will start and then you're like, Oh now this is my best friend mm-hmm. and then grade twelve will start. No no no, this is my best friend. It's like, bro, freaking pick. Then they're none of your friends. If they keep changing, they're really not your friend. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I found that so crazy as a kid. I still find that crazy. Uh, yeah, I never experienced that, but yeah. You've never heard anyone say, this is my best friend, and then the next year, it's like, no, no, this is my best Maybe friend I now. never paid attention to them. Yeah, see, well, see that's, that's your fractal. <laughs> you just didn't care, you know? It's like... Yeah, probably. <laughs> I, I feel like the people that care the most about that kind of stuff are really insecure. Okay. Because it's like, it's like, who cares, man? Right, like, right, right. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. yeah I, 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 I feel know. like <laughs> I feel like marketers mm-hmm. like prey on the weak-minded. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, the ones who are more influent, influenceable. Influence, uh, influence. Influence. You can be more influenced. Yeah. 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 But yeah, so it's like. And that's how I feel like the majority of society is. Like, how many people actually reflect on their decisions and be like, this is actually my decision? Mm. People say, like, no, I believe in this. But it's like, unless you've challenged that thought, yeah, then it's like, it's really not your thought. It's just like a meme that you've heard and mm-hmm. you're now reciting. Right. The coldest thing I ever did... I'm, I'm pretty cold when I'm cold. <laughs> uh, the coldest thing I ever did was... <laughs> it's a terrible story. Okay. It's a terrible, terrible story. It's kind of mean. It's not like I it wasn't mean, but I also think it had to do with like, like so me and my current girlfriend we used to work together, and um, we were in the office. Okay. And then this guy was in there too, and I guess I was like, like threatened by the guy, like psych, like looking at it now, like psychologically, mm. and I was like, oh, I want to impress her, or whatever, whatever. And then okay. I was like, we were talking about GMOs, and I was like, yeah, GMOs are so bad, whatever. And then the guy was like, um, no, no, he was talking about GMOs. He's like, yeah, GMOs are so terrible. And I'm like, oh, what exactly is a GMO? And he's like, it's a genetically modified organism. And I was like, I understand that you know what the acronym is, but <laughs> what is exactly a GMO? Okay. And he shut up. And I'm like, that's what I mean. Like, I'm not trying to tell you the story like to rip on the guy, right, right, but it's right. like that's the most – that's mostly what society's about. Mm. People like hearing something and they don't challenge it enough to be like, well, what is exactly a GMO? Mm. What does it do? Right. Like, I understand that you can, you can recite back to me the name. That's cool. Yeah. But like, but do you have any free thought about what it does to you or how you, why you perceive it in this way? Mm-hmm. You know, cause right. I can tell you a lot of people don't like GMOs cause like Monsanto and stuff. But people like Neil deGrasse Tyson, who are geniuses, they're like, everything's a GMO, bro. Like, once right. you start combining things, it's genetically modified. Yeah. So what do you mean by GMO? Mm-hmm. That's the real question, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Or, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it's hard for people to do that because people don't like – because you know what? We identify – well, the mind identifies with their ideas as them. Mm-hmm. it's hard for people to disassociate their ideas from them. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. this is my belief, and if you challenge your belief, my belief, you're challenging me. I'm not challenging you. I'm challenging your belief, bro. You need to be able to separate your belief from your identity. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But like 90% of the world doesn't do that, and that's why you can't have a good enough discussion. Yeah, they get very emotional and get too attached to it. Yeah. Yeah. But, and then this like reminds me of um, uh, the term reductionist. We're very reductionist in the Mm -hmm. way we think. We keep like trying to tear something down to its like baser components, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. It's kind of what we do with, this, like, that's what Socrates did, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like you're always, like, questioning why, 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 why. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's the fundamentals of philosophy. But even, all right, actually, you know what? Fractals, again, there you go. Great proof that 90% of society is like this. Socrates himself was a big why questioner. <laughs> they killed him. Right? Yeah, yeah. Because they're like, you're changing the minds of too many youth. Yeah, that's what they were scared of. Yeah. That's what they're scared of. Why would you be afraid of that? Oh, because of control mechanisms. Oh, because we can use you as cattle, make money off of you. Mm. But if too many people start asking, wait, wait, why do I have to go to work every day? Mm. Then that becomes a problem. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Now I understand, like people like uh, the New York mayor. He's trying to like um, Andrew Young or something. Andrew. Oh, he's he's pushing for universal basic income. He's going for presidency. Uh, Andrew Yang. Oh, that guy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so, so like in the society we now have with like universal basic income. I think there's a income, couple of them doing that, but yeah. Mm-hmm. So if we Anyways. if we actually achieve universal basic income, then it's like yeah, go free free thinking all you want, bro. We don't need to make money off you anymore. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. Wow, that was friggin' intense. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you wanted to go in that direction. No, I was I was not planning to go in that direction, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So basically, uh, question everything. Of course. You know, I. But see again, fractals. I've been thinking about this this way, and this like me saying like question everything. Be like, oh, that's cool. It's like a new thing. It's like no, no. If you look at my work, when I was designing things like five years mm-hmm. ago, mm-hmm. I made this thing called question everything, and I started to do like weird, um, weird like designs of like one of them was like people looking at a TV and then there was like a sheep in the TV that I made and then the caption oh, yeah, yeah, remember was, that. remember that? Remember yeah. that one? The memes. And the memes, yeah. These I didn't memes. know they were memes though. I just, I was creating I, I don't think their word was memes existed then. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I guess not. Yeah, because like social media wasn't that big. But like, yeah, it was, it was a meme, yeah. yeah. And it's like, but I guess like this also gives you like validation in your own work because if you look at how far you've come, then you're like, no, I've been doing this for a real long time. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's like I know what I'm talking about now, right? You know what I'm saying? But anyways, yeah. so like the whole thing about question everything, and it's like we were onto something we just never let it go. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like whereas like somebody to write like question everything, and then you hit this point where it's like, dude, you need to make some money, you need to get a job, you need to get a family, and it's like, okay, true, I got to stop questioning everything. Like, you know what I mean? Like it mm-hmm. gets. Yeah. yeah, that was uh, pretty much the or, like the motto of when we were growing up. Basically, we used to freaking art like we debated a debate lot. a lot. I wouldn't even call it debates. It turned into like like shouting matches. We do, know? we did. Like, that. Remember yeah. that? We just like started making fun of each other, like belligerent. And we're like, oh my god! <laughs> but I mean, like we went through that as children, yeah. And then we moved yeah. past it because we realized, oh, we're not achieving anything by hurting one another's feelings. Yeah, I mean, we learn from our mistakes. But how many people have even gone through that? And that's right, why you yeah, see a lot true. of people true, true, true. belligerent over each other online. It's like, because you you've never gone through that. You've never gone through the experience of having your ideas challenged or being made fun of by the rest of the group because mm-hmm. you believe something. Right. We used to make fun of you all the time for loving America. Oh, I know. Yeah, 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 you're yeah, like, yeah. oh, I like Superman. Yo, Toronto's where it's at. We, yo, we're, we're from Canada, bro. <laughs> Why do you love America? Why don't you, so... go, why don't you go live in America then? You know what I mean? Well, you're so into America. That's not God, but... <laughs> yeah. You I know what I'm saying? Yeah, like... yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I remember that. I remember that. Yeah. So I mean, a, lot like... of, a lot of times when I do do it, though, it was a lot to do be just on the other side, just to, like, create... Controversy? Controversy. See, I didn't know to that. To create, just to... Que- like, that was my point of, like, you to question the thing, right? It's like, why do I hate America? You know? Like, yeah, yeah. It's like, 
It's like that. It was, it was, well, why do we hate it? But yeah, you yeah, loved it. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. It but, was just. But you know what's funny about the that other though? Side, yeah. yeah. That pushed me out of the box of my own thinking, mm-hmm. and it made me at school be like, so like when everyone was like into rap music. I love rap music now, but when everyone was into rap music, I was like super anti-rap, and I would make <laughs> fun of everyone because I was like, why do you all like this? Right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. You're. It seems as though you're all following the majority trend. You're mm. not thinking for yourselves. And then all of a sudden, Jay-Z signed freaking uh, Fall Out Boy. And then everybody was like, yo, you all listen to that, that pop punk music too, bro? And I'm like, oh, yeah. Because I was always into pop punk. And right. people were like, oh, I listen to that now too, bro. Like, you listen to you listen to that uh, Fall Out Boy, Dance Dance, bro? And I hated Dance Dance. I love it now. But I hated it because, like, <laughs> Everyone loved it. And I was like, right. why do you guys like this? And everyone started wearing skinny jeans, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to say, like, Filipino, like, I'm Filipino, so this isn't racist. But, like, <laughs> Filipino people are really into, like, fads, you know? They will follow anything that people think is cool. Well, I think a lot of people do that. No, no, but they'll do it, like, extreme, bro. Like, you didn't go to Pope. People okay. were, like, next level. <laughs> okay. You know, like I watched some dude go from baggy <laughs> pants to skinny jeans all because Jay-Z signed Fall Out Boy. Really? Like what happened, man? <laughs> like just stick to your allegiances, you know? Uh, me growing up, yeah, that was the, I was like all Eminem or all like whoever he signed, right? It was like, oh, it's just like, yeah, like, yeah, like the sure. weirdest. Yeah, yeah, you liked uh, 50 Cent first. And we make fun of you for 50 Cent, too. It's like, yo, he didn't get shot nine times, bro. Remember that? You're like, no, man, it was real, you know? But that's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was, just, it was fun. But yeah. yeah, yeah. It's interesting that, like, because of... Mm-hmm. See, like, even this, even this, Socratic Gamers, we've always talked this way. I, how, how long have I been saying, yeah, we should record what we're saying right now? Yeah, Remember yeah, we used yeah. to go oh, on yeah. those walks, and then yeah. I would be like... Oh, yeah. If we just mic'd ourselves on this walk, we'd have a podcast, you know? <laughs> and then we moved in together and we're like, oh, sweet. Now we can actually do a podcast. Right. So. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah. I don't know. People. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> what sucks, though, is like people listen to this and they're like, I wish I had that childhood. I feel bad for you. Yeah. You, I would wish I had that childhood, too. Mm-hmm. But I had it. So. <laughs> Sucks. Yeah. Well, I mean, we're not all given the same hand. So. That's true. It's so the best of what you, gotta, <laughs> <laughs> you can only do the best you can with what you've been given, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know what's funny? That little troll thing that I just did right there. Should we have a moment of silence? That would be that. Like, there was no words for this before. Nobody knew what trolling was, but we would make fun of each other in that way yeah. all the time. But it's like now we nobody has thick skin. <laughs> But you know what thick skin comes down to? Insecurity. As long as you're not physically harming me, it's like, so what if you said that? Right. You know? Mm -hmm. But like, uh, Israel Adesanya said this. He's like, don't write checks your your hands can't cash. Okay. Right? So like, don't talk smack if you can't back it up. Mm -hmm. So it's like, yeah, we, we would like, argue with each other but it's like but are you strong enough in your belief to defend it mm-hmm. you know what i mean yeah. yeah 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 but if you actually look at the way like like the the group the like winter gardens group uh like evolved and stuff it's like certain people couldn't hack it do you remember the, i won't name their names but remember the guy at the end of the street mm-hmm. uh mm-hmm. blonde hair stars of the cave Rhymes with wrist off. <laughs> okay, yeah. Remember, yeah. Oh, so, <laughs> so you know what I mean? So it's like, there's, <laughs> there's one guy, like, we hung out with him, Brit, and it's like, all right, gone. Yeah. yeah. You know, I'm like. That's true. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I because it's like, some people just don't like listening to other people talk. I don't know. <laughs> I guess yeah. so. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, it was, it was fun. Yeah. But I think it, like, provided a lot of... I. This is going to sound really horrible, but I think bullying is important. Like, I think your close friends should bully you. Okay, yeah. That, that, that's, what, that's what we... Yes. That's what I mean. Yeah, no, okay. no, 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 no. Like... Let's... Yeah, yeah, I was about to say. 
Okay, you clarify. Well, I mean, yeah, but like, I feel like bullying. Actually, isn't... no, yeah, because like, I, I see what you mean. I, like, you know what uh, I mean? Like, all right, so like, we, but it's about having like a solid mental foundation, because like. I've there's been moments where people have tried to bully me, but in my head I created the story of like no my my friends and family will f you up, bro. So like whenever yeah. I talk to these people, I remember this one guy I was in art class. I think mm-hmm. I told the story before, but like I was in art class and then he was like throwing papers at me, and my <laughs> friend was like, oh shoot, no he's throwing papers, and I was like, what the hell is wrong with this guy? So I like looked at him like what the what the are you doing, bro? Mm-hmm. And then like as I was walking to the he was like trying to get like a laugh out of the girls. It's like I get it, like hormones, whatever, yeah. good for you. And then um, as I was going out to the bathroom, he tried to do that like little. Um, little punk you move where yeah. he's like he's trying to make you flinch yeah. and I didn't even I didn't flinch and I just looked at him and then I kept walking out of the room to go to the bathroom but like it wasn't it wasn't mm. like like I needed that to show me who I was right. you need adversity to because if everything is nice how will you become a warrior right you know oh yeah 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 life isn't fair and it's not nice but you got to man up, you know? I know mm. that's a very sexist yeah, thing to say, but you got to person up, whatever. It's, yeah. But you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah I don't know. It's just a phrase. But you you yeah. need you need adversity to grow through something. And if you don't have adversity to show you who you are, then you'll always be guessing, and that's why you'll never have confidence. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. it's like bullying is... Can build up character. Can build up character... But I think the bigger question is, why am I being bullied in the first place? Right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. people just don't bully you out of nowhere. It's like, oh, this one's an easy target. Well, okay, also why a lot are you of times, an easy target, bro? Right, right. You know what I mean? Like, like, oh, I get bullied a lot in school. Okay, let's work on it. You know, like, right. what are you doing that's allowing these people to think that they can bully you? Maybe take a martial arts class. Mm-hmm. You know? Because, like... One thing that I liked the most about martial arts, like, okay, I didn't do martial arts as a kid, but we would fight a lot. Yeah. And knowing how to fight is really important when it comes down to bullying. Because mm. it gives you that confidence of like, okay, we could throw down. Yeah. You know right, what I'm saying? Right, right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know, man. It's a weird world. That really did not go where I thought <laughs> well, that was yeah, going to yeah, go. Yeah. I started ranting. I'm sorry. <laughs> but I think it's important that, like, right. these things get said because, like, a lot of people, a lot of people are, like, it's too loving. <laughs> you know? Like, love will save the world. Will it save the world, man? Or will you just be manipulated by other people that aren't very loving? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I just, yeah. It's a weird gripe. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I just, I just like juxtapositions. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not cut and dry. No. But we like to hope it is because people can't deal with uncertainty. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I, yeah that's, yeah, that's true. People can't deal with that. Right? Like, yeah. am I the person I think I was? Am I, you know, mm-hmm. this and that? Yeah. Anyways, I think this is like a four hour podcast. I think so. Yeah. So, uh, till next week, yeah. when we talk about um, Avengers, take a martial arts class if you're scared and getting bullied. Uh, it could help. But don't be the bully er when you learn how to defend yourself. Because that can also happen. What? Do, like, if you're being bullied and then you gain the superpower of, like, being able to defend yourself, a lot of people oftentimes, like, now want to seek revenge. Which is uh, not good either, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think people need, like, a lot of guidance. I think, I think the youth of today need a lot of guidance. Or maybe not. Who knows? <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Whichever. Right. So... Take it easy. Enjoy your life. You want to say anything cool? Um, it's the end game now. <laughs> <laughs> He's talking about climate change. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Till next week. Take it easy. Be, uh, peace. Bye. <laughs>